to build or not to build? That's the question for today. I made my own NAS in a previous video using used components and true NAS scale, but what if I just bought something off the shelf, like this DriveStore 4 from Asus Store? Would it be faster? Cheaper? Easier? Or smaller? Okay, well, it's definitely smaller, but let's go ahead and figure out the rest. If you've watched videos on this channel before, this one might seem a bit weird. Normally, I cover older or budget hardware and try to find interesting ways to put that hardware to use. So why am I covering this brand new NAS? Well, when Asus Store reached out a while back asking me to take a look at one of their products, I was initially a bit skeptical because it didn't make a lot of sense with the types of videos I had done before. But their marketing rep made it really clear that they didn't expect any sort of specific direction, and I decided it would be cool to compare their NAS to the NAS I had been planning to build, which I covered in my last video. It also didn't hurt that they offered to send over some 4TB drives for that as well, so big thanks to the folks over at Asus Store. Today, we're going to take a look at this Drive Store 4, which is the cheapest 4-bay model that Asus Store offers, coming in at $270 and I specifically asked for it because I figured it would be a little bit closer in price to our DIY build, which ran me about $150. The DriveStore 4 has a Realtek RTD 1296 quad-core ARM CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz, which isn't anything crazy, but should be plenty for basic NAS functions, and also offers 1080p60 video encoding and 4K60 video decoding, which can really help with things like Plex or Jellyfin. The non-pro model that I have comes with 1GB of DDR4 memory, which definitely isn't much, but Asus Store claims that their ADM software is optimized to use memory efficiently, but we'll see how true that claim is here soon. On the front of the case, we have a few indication LEDs, as well as a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. I hate USB naming so much. On the back, we have another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, as well as probably the coolest feature of this NAS, which is the 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port. Having a 2.5 gigabit connection means that we'll be limited by the CPU, RAM, or actual hard drives rather than a gigabit connection, assuming that we have the networking hardware to make that work. There's also a port for the external power supply, as well as a power and reset button. It's a small complaint, but the plastic on the outside of this NAS is an absolute fingerprint magnet. I don't really care about looks that much, but it was a bit annoying to have to keep wiping it down all the time while filming. This model doesn't have external hot swappable drive bays, so you have to remove four thumb screws on the back to access the internals of this machine. I appreciate the addition of thumb screws, but out of the box they were way too tight, so I was forced to use a screwdriver. Not a huge deal, as I would have used a screwdriver probably anyway, but it sort of defeats the whole toolless assembly moniker. After the thumb screws are removed, the outer part of the case just slides off, exposing the four internal 3.5 inch drive bays, as well as the motherboard and 120mm fan. Adding the drives in is as easy as sliding them into the bays and using the provided thumb screws to secure them in place. With everything put together, we can plug in the power supply, connect it to our network, and start it up. To connect to the NAS, Asus Store has you download their Asus Store Control Center application, which lets you discover and configure your NAS. I don't like that you're expected to download software for this, but I understand why they do it this way. Fortunately, the software seems pretty simple and effective, but I wish there was an option to just find the IP of your NAS and not use the software at all if you preferred to. After opening up the NAS's web UI, I was very easily able to update and initialize the system. It's a small detail, but I love the immediate option to use a dark mode. If I was setting this up for myself, I probably would have used the custom setup option, but I thought it would be a little bit more interesting to see the one-click setup option instead. This presented a simple form, which tried to select a RAID type based on my use case. I don't dislike this approach, but I wish there would have been more clarity on how many drive failures could occur with each RAID type, as many users with this NAS might not be aware. I do really appreciate that they force you to use a strong password for the root user account. 
After initialization, I was presented with a few slides which briefly explained where to modify storage, users, shared folders, and services, as well as a great security warning and explanation of recommended security and backup practices, which I really appreciate. After this, it was really easy to set up shared folders, create user groups, check the status of our drives and RAID volume, as well as check out the app manager. I wasn't blown away with the amount of apps, but there was definitely a solid collection available. Obviously there were things like Plex and Nextcloud, but it also included some I wasn't necessarily expecting, such as Jellyfin, Home Assistant, Radar, Sonar, and LiDAR, and WordPress. It also includes Docker, so you should be able to run your own containers if an app doesn't exist in the ADM library, although I haven't tried that yet. There's no option for virtualization, but that makes sense because, realistically, I don't think people should be using a low-powered NAS like this for much more than storage and maybe a few apps. Ace Store also provides their Surveillance Center app, which lets you connect up to four cameras so that you can use this NAS as an NVR for your home security setup, which I will probably take a look at in a future video. With closed software like ADM, you will run into limitations, but overall, I really like the clean and organized feel of everything, and I never really struggled to figure out how to do something. To get a share set up, I first made a new user, and then gave that user access to the shared folders I wanted. The SMB service was already running, so I could just hop into Windows and use my user info to access everything. I wanted to try out a few apps, so I installed Plex and Home Assistant. Home Assistant relies on the Docker install, so I downloaded that as well. After they finished downloading, the setup was as easy as clicking the icon to bring up each app in the web browser, and then follow the on-screen prompts like normal. I didn't have any issues with Home Assistant or Plex, and the 4K transcoding seemed to actually work as expected, which is pretty awesome for such a low-powered device. I don't currently have a 2.5 gigabit switch, but I really didn't want to hold back any potential performance by not using the 2.5 gigabit NIC, which in my opinion is one of the best things about this NAS. To test this port though, I had to set up a direct connection to a 2.5 gigabit NIC on my main PC, which means the drive store would no longer be accessible on my local network, and could potentially be completely inaccessible if I messed something up. To fix this, I was actually able to just pop in a cheap little USB Wi-Fi adapter and set up another network interface in the web UI. Obviously, this isn't good for transferring data, but it at least gave me a way to access the UI from my local network and also take advantage of the 2.5 gigabit direct connection. Everything seems to be working pretty well with getting this NAS set up, but how does it perform? I was really concerned about only having one gigabyte of RAM, and I'm sure many of you are as well, so I might as well start with that. Asystore claims that their ADM software is optimized in such a way to operate on what would typically seem like too little memory, and that may be true to an extent. Everything I set up in this video seemed to run fairly smoothly, but the memory usage was nearly maxed out all of the time, and I imagine performance could be significantly limited if you were to try to run more than a couple of workloads on this machine. Which leads me to suggest that if you are interested in this NAS, I would spend just a little bit more money on the Pro model, which has twice the memory. To test transfer speeds, I decided to do a somewhat real-world test and copied about 58 gigabytes worth of various files over to the drive store from an SSD on my main PC. With writes, we don't really see the 2.5 gigabit connection being taken advantage of, with speeds rarely getting above 115 megabytes per second. When we compare this to my $150 DIY True NAS build, we see that the DIY NAS is often going well above 150 megabytes per second and occasionally gets close to 200 megabytes per second. The DIY NAS finished the transfer with a time of 6 minutes and 58 seconds, which was 32% faster than the Asus Store's time of 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Reading that data back is a different story though, with the Drive Store finishing with a time of 6 minutes and 7 seconds, and the True NAS build coming in actually 10% slower at 6 minutes and 44 seconds. Here, we can definitely see both systems taking advantage of the 2.5 gigabit connection. Speed is important, but power consumption is probably just as important when buying a NAS. Our DIY NAS pulls around 38 watts at idle and 45 watts while transferring the files from the last test. The Asus Store, with its low-powered ARM processor, obviously consumes less at 22 watts at idle and 27 watts under load. 
The idle power draw can come down even more, to around 115 watts or so, if the discs are put into hibernation, but since there is some dispute on whether or not this can add unnecessary wear and tear on drives, I'm going to stick to the 22 watt idle measurement. If we go off of a 12 cent per kilowatt hour price and use the idle measurements, the drive store would cost around $24 a year in electricity costs, and the DIY TrueNAS server would cost around $40 per year. If you're trying to decide between something like the Drive Store 4 or building something yourself, these numbers might be helpful, but there are a ton of other reasons to pick one over the other. Before getting into a lot of comparisons between a DIY NAS and something made by a manufacturer, note that while I'm using some of the data and experiences from using my NAS as well as the Asus Store, I'm trying to speak in general terms. Not everything is entirely accurate because there are a lot of options on the market, and the user experience with those products can widely vary. If you go the DIY route, odds are you're going to save money, especially if you're okay with buying used components. I don't even think I made the best decisions with my NAS build, and I still had similar to or better performance than the Drive Store 4 while coming in at almost half the cost. And the Drive Store 4 is also one of the best bargains on the market, with most 4-bay NASs coming in over $300. Because all of the parts are standard PC components, they can easily be upgraded down the road, so you aren't forced into buying a new NAS whenever you need better performance or different features. For example, if I didn't need 2.5 gigabit networking, I could have saved money on my NAS build and just used the built-in gigabit connection. Then later, I could upgrade to a 2.5 gigabit NIC if I added a multi-gigabit switch to my network or something. Having swappable components also means that it's really easy to replace components when they inevitably fail. Spoiler alert, but my DIY NAS motherboard actually failed a few weeks in, but I was able to pretty quickly replace it with a completely different motherboard, at least until I have some time to get the parts I'm going to use to upgrade it. Stay tuned for that video, by the way. It was also really simple to troubleshoot when that motherboard did fail because the components aren't proprietary. I was able to troubleshoot, fix, and get my NAS up and running in about a day, which is a lot faster than a typical RMA process. I installed TrueNAS on this machine, and while it might not be the best software for these components for various reasons, I've really enjoyed it for the last month or so. But if I didn't, I could easily use something like Open Media Vault, Unraid, Debian Linux, or whatever I want. You have a ton of options, but sometimes options can be complicated, and a store-bought NAS can be a simple solution if needed. Although the ADM software is a bit locked down and proprietary, it does have the benefit of, well, just working. Hopefully. There's always a chance that a company could abandon software or do a poor job of maintaining it, but when it's done well, having software like ADM that is specifically designed for the exact hardware you purchased can make getting things set up a lot simpler. It's also most likely easier to get apps up and running because they were also designed specifically for the device. For example, setting up Home Assistant and Plex on the Drive Store was basically a single click of the install button, whereas in TrueNAS Scale, I spent quite a bit of time having to troubleshoot my Plex install and actually failed to get Home Assistant fully working. I'm sure if I spent more time, I could get it up and running, but I don't really want to. And I imagine there are a lot of people that don't want to have to tinker, troubleshoot, and learn how Docker containers work just to run Plex on their NAS. Having a pre-built NAS can just be a much simpler solution. It can also be a much smaller solution as well. The drive store and most other four bay NASs are very compact. This drive store takes up about six liters of space, while the Antec 300 case I built my DIY NAS in is over six times the size at 44 liters. Obviously, I could have used a different case, but something like the drive store is just going to be a lot easier to find a spot for in your home or office. It's probably also going to use a fair bit less power than anything DIY. This is partly because a lot of NASs use ARM SOCs in their design, and also because they only build these to serve one purpose, whereas standard PC components are usually designed to potentially play many different roles. Because of the more streamlined design and low-powered chips, most off-the-shelf NASs are going to be more power efficient than something you can make at home. You could use something low-powered like a Raspberry Pi, but that has a lot of different limitations. Jeff Geerling has some awesome videos on that that I'll link in the description if you're interested. 
This is a very small point, but one benefit of a pre-built NAS, at least from Asus or Synology, is that they have a built-in security suite, so you can use your NAS as an NVR for your security cameras. There are some open source NVRs out there, but in my experience, nothing has been as solid as I would like. I've been using my two base Synology for this purpose, and it's been fantastic. And I'm really curious to see if the Asister offering will be as useful. Another big benefit of something from a manufacturer is that you will have some sort of warranty and hopefully decent support. I didn't have a reason to contact support at Asus Store, so I can't speak to that, but they do have a really nice page where all software and documentation can easily be downloaded, and the user guide is fairly detailed and clear. TrueNAS and other operating systems have documentation, but you're pretty much on your own in terms of support. As with most things, this is a bit of a trade-off. With the DIY NAS, I wasn't able to just send it back to the manufacturer when my motherboard stopped working, but on the flip side, I was able to just swap out the failed component and didn't have to wait weeks or months through an RMA process. So it really just depends on what makes the most sense for you, the user. If you're someone like me that loves to tinker and learn about new technology while staying on a very tight budget, I highly recommend looking into a DIY NAS or home server of some kind. It can be a lot of fun and serve a very practical role for not a ton of money. If you prefer a simple solution that gets the job done while running quietly tucked away somewhere, then I also highly recommend looking into one of the options from Asus Store. Once again, if you're looking at the drive store line, I would definitely recommend the Pro models, which come in both a 4-bay and 2-bay option. I'll have affiliate links for those down in the description if you're interested. This was sort of a different video for my channel, as so far I've only really taken a look at used hardware, so let me know if you liked or disliked it by clicking those thumb-shaped buttons or leaving a comment below. I'll probably stick to used components and builds for the most part, but maybe it could be cool to cover some products like this as well moving forward. If you liked this video and are interested in making a server of your own, maybe check out my other TrueNAS and Unraid videos on the channel. That's about it for this one though, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.